When learning for real, every lesson is a big deal. You don't have bad grades. You have insane teachers. Abraham Lincoln. To learn something for real, you need three things. One, you have to be really, really curious about the thing. If you are not curious, you will not learn. You will only memorize for long enough to pass a test. You will be made to sell out for a GPA so that your teachers can continue the charade and get paid. Tricking you into memorization, aside from being utterly useless, is extremely unethical because it disables your mind. To take good old math as example, not only memorization does nothing for you, watching you recalling a formula that you don't understand is really kind of embarrassing and somewhat sad. You can't learn math because math is not a real subject. It is a thing that seems like a subject, but it is not. It is something else. Similarly, the question, why are we here? Sounds great. It is impressive, large, coherent, but it is not a real question. It has been called a silly question. It is really a good signal for a therapist, but not actually a real and working question that you can really answer. The field of mathematics does exist, of course. You can make a really cool map out of it. But mathematics, the class, the set of lectures, the idea that here is a list of steps that you need to learn math, is utterly stupid. If you have a really good math teacher, here are the two things that block them from actually helping you. If you go off script or learn on your own away from a textbook, you will fail the final test or near enough and your teacher needs to get paid. They will do anything to get paid. They will sell you out because they sold out thousands and thousands of other students. You're not special in their eyes. Though you may become a pupil that they use to wash their guilt off. Cut it out. Don't be like that. That won't get you far in life. They will hold up a textbook with the word math and say, This here is proof that math exists. And these here are the steps that we must take. Not because it is true, but because she can hide behind the authority of the book. Holding the book up is your teacher's way to shut you up, to cut you off, so that you are quiet and she gets paid. If she does not get paid, she can't put food on the table. She has to look for another job. She will be inconvenienced. Your authentic grasp on mathematics does not matter to your teacher. It never will. The only thing that matters is the fantasy that you can learn math by memorization, by slowly working up your way to it, by memorizing countless, useless, unintegrated fact. The only thing that matters here is that she checks all the boxes so that she gets paid. There's nothing here. And to make sure that you can't prove a damn thing, she will prevent herself from ever asking, are my kids really learning math? Do my textbooks work? In other words, she will be in denial. She puts up a barrier in her mind 
and she will never cross it. This way, she can sleep at night. Similarly, members of cults do this. They never allow themselves to question the existence of their god or gods and reap all the benefits of the community without examining anything at any length. 2. To begin learning something for real, you will need context. Context is like a busy desk when working on something fun. So schools destroy, nay, devastate context by cutting everything up into stupid time periods. They do this to move a large number of students through all the classes for the purpose of getting paid. It's like watching meat being turned into sausages. Working on something and then destroying that context, nay, preventing that context from developing in the first place, and then being forced to start learning something else, not only ensures that you are brainlessly memorizing, but that you are slowly going crazy. The kids without support do, in fact, go crazy. This is the walk. The walk from one crowd to the other. You know the one I'm talking about. They just give up on who they are because they can't make it. Cigarettes, alcohol, drugs, fighting, really seriously stupid and dangerous ideas, cheating, lying, and strange ideation is about an escape that, in fact, makes them crazy. A strange toxicity builds up between arrogant parents and nasty teachers, where a lot of kids are constantly put in the line of fire. Their parents punish, their teachers rob them, and bullies beat them all the while being threatened by being held back, which will make the teachers more arrogant towards the student, make the parents more pissed off by being even more inconvenienced by their existence, and fuel bullies to a degree where very few bullied kids aren't turned into bullies themselves. This constant toxicity, pressure, threat, stress makes a normal person go crazy. If they received a real education, they would not become crazy. So the craziness isn't in them. It's not theirs. It is not who they are. It is that this constant toxicity, pressure, threat, stress eventually poisons them. If they do become a bully, then they are pushed to cross a line for which they will never forgive themselves for. Deep down, they will always think there is something dark and bad in them. So like in real life, there are heartbreaking paths of no return here. If you have a friend like that, by the way, tell them that to make their pain count for more, they can protect others from following in their footsteps. This is a path of healing. Real context is quite a surprise because it is rooted in your uniqueness. You know how you feel different? That's actually real. You are different from everybody else. We each have a unique constellation of stars within. If you have a bunch of friends and someone replaced you with a clone, they would all freak the heck out. They would know it's not you. You are perfectly unique. No one like you has existed before. No one like you will exist 
in the infinite future ahead. Context is actually born from that uniqueness, and the name for that is curiosity. Note how natural curiosity is to you, how personal, how fitting, how normal, how stress-free, how satisfying, how healthy. To take a year, for example, when you are not poisoned by stress, you should show a cycle of curiosities. You start with something neat, like buying a cheap 3D pen on sale, out of curiosity. You make a disaster of an art piece that doesn't quite stay up, and something else grabs you by the button. Maybe you're listening to The Giants of Philosophy as read by Charlton Heston, making strange little notes that will look like gibberish in a few weeks down the road. Then summer comes, and you start putting together a backpack, tent, sleeping bag, and then set off on a great expedition to camp the whole summer in your freaking backyard, with electricity to charge your phone, of course. Then, after a few more curiosities, you discover that winter, somehow, has something to do with your 3D pen. But now, as you dabble in it, you actually create little something that can stand on its little feet. That year or few months made you more capable in reasoning about 3D things, about sculptures, now somehow 3D things fit you. You get an Ender 3D printer, couple of spools of PLA, print out a few things from the thingiverse, and boom! A new star emerges in your constellation of curiosities. It will be so new and so seemingly unlike you that you can't comprehend how shocking that emergence is. Now, as a result, you are binging on Blender, a free 3D modeling program, tutorials about precision modeling for 3D printers so that you can start printing your own gizmos up. Might as well order a couple of more spools of the PLA, because creating things out of your mind and out of thin air, oh boy, oh boy, it is something else. Magic doesn't even come close to it. But you see, the next time, the next time you return to Blender after a few months of doing something else, your soul is not just ready, but it is ravenous for mastering geometry nodes and dabbling in remeshing. At this point, there is a corner in your house, a wall, and a huge box filled with strange 3D parts. You have Blender keyboard shortcuts up on the wall and proudly display the box in which your automatic bed leveling upgrade came in. Bam! It was even easy to install. That's context. That is really, really healthy. This is so beautiful. And it is pure genius. And now there are more stars in your constellation as things are stacking and branching in your soul. As you are preparing for the Appalachian Trail, in hopes of hitting up the Triple Crown where you additionally walk the PCT and CDT, 
probably re-listening to giants of philosophy, as your mind is now flourishing far beyond simple constellations. You are growing up. Learning for real pushes your mind upwards. See, you don't know how bad school is because you have nothing to compare it against. That's part what makes ineffective education so popular, what makes it function. You don't know how bad you have it. And it gets more complex the later you look in life. Because it's not just school. You don't know how swiftly you will age the moment you get your perfect job in your own cubicle cell. To quote Dixie, the worst day at the trail is still better than the best day at work. Three, you need an aim. Context will take you far. In fact, context will take care of almost everything. But it is exploratory in nature. You also need a hint of direction. Something that will call to you. Now, no one is allowed to tell you what that is, and it is really not that important in the long run, but it does help in learning. In school, you are learning things without an aim. Graduation is not an aim. Or, if you have one of those teachers, she will say that you won't always have a calculator on hand to dismiss you like a piece of trash. On a large scale, aims should really be discovered. Just keep on exploring more and more curiosities. But on a much smaller scale, if you give learning mathematics an aim that actually interests you, you will learn math as just a side effect to a greater pursuit. For example, Bring back beautiful screensavers to modern computers and gadgets. In the age of generative AI, this is more interesting and fetching than ever. The AI will take care of your graphics or sprites, and you just need to do the math part. See what I mean? Two interesting screensavers to look at are the open source X screensaver on Linux and the ancient After Dark on the old Mac. It's old software, but it is lovely. Here you are learning math and programming with the aim of sharing your screensavers with the world. How cool is that? It is true that we live in a world where people close their laptop lids, so just make your screensavers that much more interesting. It only adds to the challenge. Alternatively, you can set an aim to learn math and programming by building strange things in p5.js. Make releasing video and book tutorials an aim here. Share with the world what you have learned. Now, in school context, to really learn music, you need to set an aim of releasing an album in the first semester. Generative art will take care of your cover. Do your music composition in LMMS and witness how much more profound your music education, where it creates an aim of releasing a single minimalist techno album on Bandcamp, for example. Music composition with an aim to make songs takes a couple of hours to get the hang of, and less than two days to compose your first song. We are all born composers, there is nothing special about it. These are tools for humans, invented by humans. Nothing hard here. It is just that ineffective education takes that away from you 
and hides it. Finally, one is curiosity, two is context, three is an aim, but there is also the matter of growing up. No human being is allowed to grow just a little bit, nor would anybody want to grow just a little bit. So to grow up means to grow all the way up until we become great beings. And on our way there, we will, of course, find our meaning. All you need is a hunger for real knowledge from real books written by great beings held in high esteem by all the world's authentic intellectuals. In your quest to comprehend their great thoughts, you will not be able to help but to enter into their culture. And eventually, in your culture of greatness, make your own unique contributions to the world as you stand on the shoulders of giants and in turn lend your shoulders to countless many that will follow.